Let's start with the Awingu installation. The first thing you need to do uh, is downloading the Awingu appliance itself. So depending on which kind of infrastructure you're using, you can either go to downloadawingu.com and on downloadawingu.com you will see that you are automatically redirected to our software repository. And on the software repository, you can go to the latest versions and over there you can find, for example, the images for VMware, uh, you can find the images for Hyper-V, KVM, OpenStack, Google Cloud. So most common images can be found on our uh, software repository. Um, if you're looking for doing an installation on Azure, then if you go to the uh, Azure Marketplace and look for Awingu, you will find uh, two solutions. One of them is the uh, Awingu uh, appliance itself, and the other one is the Awingu all-in-one. Uh, the Awingu appliance itself is just the virtual appliance like you can have on all the other uh, infrastructures. On Azure, we have something uh, specific, that's the Awingu all-in-one. That's an uh, automated template that not only installs an empty Awingu environment, but also installs for you a full um, uh, backend system. So um, if you don't have an existing Windows backend system and you're an Azure customer, that could be a great way to have a quick uh, setup. We will have a separate video on uh, that also on how to use the Awingu all-in-one. Um, besides the way you download the uh, appliance and, and, and start it up, uh, the software is 100% the same. So there is no functional difference between running uh, a Wingo and an on-premise installation or in a cloud installation. Everything is 100% uh, the same. You will notice that for some uh, on-premise installations, like for example VMware or uh, Hyper-V, that if you have a look on the console, there are some possibilities, for example, to set fixed uh, IP addresses and things like that. So this is also a little bit uh, different on the uh, kind of infrastructure you are using. But once the Awingu appliance has been uh, booted up, uh, is configured in the network, you will notice that if you go to the uh, Awingu appliance itself, uh, you will be automatically redirected to port 8080. And on that port 8080, you will see the Awingu installer. The Awingu installer is something we need to do only once. So um, the first time you install the uh, Awingu appliance, uh, you will need to go through the uh, installer. Once the installer has been finished, uh, port 8080 will no longer be available. It's just there during the, the first install of the first appliance the first time. And in this installer, uh, we will do a few things. So the first thing uh, you need to do is uh, read and accept the uh, end user license agreement. And then uh, Awingu will validate your minimum system requirements. There will be a separate video on Awingu sizing, but the minimum size that Awingu needs is uh, two virtual CPUs and four gigabytes of memory. If this is the case, Awingu will bring you to the second step. And on the second step, you can uh, specify your built-in user and password. Uh, be careful over here, the built-in user and uh, password, uh, especially the user, this is something that cannot be changed afterwards. The, the password, of course, you can change later on, but the built-in user is something which cannot be changed uh, afterwards. Built-in user is used for uh, creating the first configuration, but there's also the user that will keep working if there would be any kind of problem. So if, for example, in a later phase, uh, you would have problems with your Active Directory or your license is expired or any of those uh, problems, um, you will always be able to log in with the built-in user. So don't, uh, don't forget this, uh, this user. Another thing which is important with this built-in user, you cannot uh, start any Windows-based desktops um, applications. You cannot go to storage. You cannot open any um, web application. So the built-in user can only be used to access either the, the system settings, that's the place where we can do the Awingu configuration, or the dashboard. So it's an, an, it's an internal user that can only be used for making changes to the uh, Awingu configuration. Another thing which is important is that you take a username that doesn't exist in your Active Directory. So if you would, for example, call this administrator and you have, of course, an administrator on your Windows site, then uh, this one would prevail and you would not be able to log in with your Windows administrator user via Awingu. So important, it cannot be changed and it needs to be a user that doesn't exist in your Active Directory. Um, on the third page of the installer, uh, Awingu will ask me for the uh, the, the DNS server that it can use uh, for uh, resolving uh, names. Uh, either use a public DNS over here or use the, the DNS server, which is linked to your uh, Active Directory. Uh, so in my case, I'm just going to use a, a public one. Uh, and the same thing for the NTP server. So uh, uh, it's, it's important that um, time is uh, synchronized on the uh, Awingu appliance. So 
Uh, Awingo needs an, um, an NTP server for um, uh, time synchronization. So um, either, again, use your Active Directory or a, a public uh, NTP uh, service. The host name, this is the name as which the uh, Awingo appliance will be known in the, in the setup. This can be anything. Um, it only becomes important when you're planning to go to a multi-node uh, Awingo setup. So uh, if you want to scale out uh, Awingo later on, it could be, for example, interesting already to give this uh, a, a common name like uh, Awingo node, uh, node 1 in uh, my case. Um, in the next step, Awingo will validate if it can reach the, uh, the DNS and the NTP server. Uh, if this is the case, uh, Awingo will go to the, to the next step. This is the last step uh, in the installer. It's where Awingo asks if you want to use an internal database or an external database. Um, as said before, you can cluster uh, Awingo uh, together with multiple nodes to make like a larger environment or a high available environment. For doing so, we, we, we need an external database. Um, if you decide to not use the internal external database, then Awingo will install on the first node uh, the database itself. That's going to work perfectly. That's the ideal situ situation for smaller setups or setups that not will go above 300 concurrent uh, RDP streams. Uh, but uh, if you plan to go to a multi-node or if you plan to scale out to, to larger environments, it's important that uh, during the installer, you decide to use an external uh, database. Uh, Awingo supports uh, Microsoft um, uh, SQL, uh, Postgres SQL, so there is a there is a different uh, choices. Um, also, the versions, uh, multiple versions are supported, so that's also no problem. If you decide to install Awingo on an external database, then this is the time where you can uh, select it. Um, in this case, we will use uh, an internal database, so I don't need to do anything. I can just go to next and uh, I can start the uh, installer. Um, the installer itself will, uh, will take uh, a few minutes. Once the installer is finished, we can go to the next step.